The only function that we're really missing to add to the LCD functions is to insert characters at any location on the LCD. Let's say we want to have a number to be placed in these three digits. Let me just make it like one, two, three or something. And we always want those digits to be in these three locations, in these three positions. So you'll need to know what location that particular digit is. The alternative would be to always clear the display and start from this location and then start writing whatever we need on this line and then going to this line and writing whatever we need to go on this line. And in the case of just putting a number in this location, we would have to first clear the display, go to the next line, and then have this, this many spaces to this point and then write the one, two, three or write the number. But fortunately there's a nice little command or an instruction that you can locate the cursor in any of these boxes or digits. And it's called the DRAM address. These, each one of these is a DRAM address. And to be able to access this instruction to position the cursor at any one of these DRAM addresses, it is 0x80 in hex or 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that's the beginning. So you have actually, this is the, the binary number you have to maintain. It's a 1 at this location. And this, by the way, this is at D0 through 7. So this is the data pins. And you are just sending a byte. This is would be considered the byte, as we all would know. So the instruction would always be 80. And then these remaining seven digits, we know that eight digits or an eight binary number would be 256 as the maximum value, but seven digits would be 128 as the maximum value. But you know that there are not 128 display positions, but we're talking about accessing a controller for standard displays, which may be displays of many different types um, of, let's say, multiple lines and multiple positions per line. So you could have almost any configuration as long as there is not a maximum of 128 positions for an LCD display. So this in initial number would correspond to this address, but we don't actually know what number would correspond to this address. So let's find out. We can do this by making a little program that loops through each of these digits. And I did this in the AVR series tutorials where I would have an X and the X would move to the next location and then the X would move to the next location and it would always erase the one behind it. So it looks like an X is sort of walking along the, the digits and I would show a number here of what the location is. I don't know what this location is though. So, I mean, I, starting out, I may need to actually put the number right here. And we can assume what these numbers are. This would be zero, this would be one, and this would be two. Okay, here we are in our program. Let's first, actually, I wanna put this in the while loop. And this, the reason why is because I want it to iterate through the entire display, but if I miss something, then I, it'll start all over again. So I'm just gonna make a simple loop. As long as i is less than 128 and i is incrementing. Right. So let's first position the, the cursor. So we're gonna send an instruction and this one is gonna be 0x80, which is the, well, we can do it with like this. 0B1000000. Zero 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 zero. That's the equivalent of 0x80. Zero and then we're going to send a character or send a string. So we want to send an x. Actually, I think I want to send a space and then an x. So what this does is it erases the x before it. So it looks like it's a walking x. If I'm going to do this, uh, 
I'm going to think that the X is actually one step ahead of it. So I'm going to start out with negative one here. I'm wondering if that's going to cause a problem with my sending instruction. Uh, we'll see. Never know until you try. Okay, now I want to actually show the, the number of that position, what, what I is, what the, the, the variable I is so I know where that location is. So I'm going to position it at the same location that's here, which is just the beginning, the first position on the LCD. And then I'm going to actually print out the I. I'm going to send an integer. I'm going to display I, and it's going to be three characters max. You know, I don't have to do this negative one here, do I? I can actually show it. here as a plus one. And it's going to start on the second one, but I'm not really worried about it. Because this would be the I. This position here would be I. And this position here would be I plus one. So we want to show I plus one at the first position, what the, the actual number is. And now I want to add a time delay and I'm going to do I'm putting the time delay at the end because I want to first show it and I want it to be on the screen for a little while so I can read it and it won't disappear I'll put it there for what is that it's a hundred thousand that should be good enough maybe too slow but we'll find out Okay, let's see if this builds. There are no errors, so let's go ahead and flash the microcontroller. Okay, I flash the microcontroller, and it doesn't seem to be doing what I expected it to do, so let's see what happened. Oh, I see my problem. I didn't add the eye to this. Let's try it again. And I needed to, because this is going to be um, adding i to this number, we'll just add it, add it to here. Since this is already a one in this position, we're just adding a number to it. We're just this. This is just a number. So by adding the i to it, it's just incrementing this number. So let's flash the microcontroller again. Okay, that seemed to work. It looks like it's a little bit too fast, so let's slow that down a little bit. I'll make it 500,000. Okay, that looks better. So we know the top line is from 0 to 15, so that makes sense. It would be like indexed from 0, so it would be 1 to 16. So 16 positions. You can see that it's still counting up, but it hasn't gotten to the next line yet. Now 40 was the next line. So 40 through 55. So if in the program, we just put this to 55, well, let's make it 56 because it's less than, it shouldn't have to go through so much more Actually, I'm going to forget that because there's no reason why we're, we, we already know what the positions are. So let's take a look at what we need to do to create our function. So we know this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And the next line was 40. And 55. 
So I want to make a function that, let's say, LCD set cursor position. And I want my inputs to be x and y. But how do we make an x and y coordinate if we have these numbers? So say I wanted to have the position be here at 46. Well, my x value I want to be 6. And my y value I want to be 2. Actually, what I want it to be, hmm. Do I want to have the index from 1 or 0? So if I'm going to make this one 6, this one has to be 1. I think I'm going to make it indexed by 0. So this would have to be y equals 1. So if I have x equals 6 and y equals 1, then the formula would be position is equal to x plus y times 40. Let's plug in the numbers. So if x is equal to 6, x, 6, plus 1 times 40 would equal 6 plus 40, which is 46. If it was at the 6th position on the first line, it would be 6 plus 0 times 40, which would equal 6 plus 0, because anything times 0 is 0, and that would equal 6. So that all makes sense. So let's go back to the program and see what we need to do. So let's do another for loop, but I'm going to do a nested for loop where I have a y or x actually, x. And this will go up to 15. And then I nest it with a y loop. y is less than, y is less than or equal to 1. And y plus plus. So now I can cycle through the entire display using a nested loop and it'll only show on the points that I need it to show. So let's send the instruction. I'm going to do this with the hexadecimal code. And I'm going to add x plus y times 40. Uh, I'm going to combine or contain the y times 40 just for my own sanity here. Making sure that the y times 40 happens first. And the x plus y doesn't happen first. In normal order of operations, it probably work fine, but I like to do it anyway. Okay, so let's put a string. Yeah, we can do the same thing. Send a string. I'm just going to put an X in this one. And then I'm going to have a time delay. I'll make that uh, 500,000 again. And this time, instead of putting that space behind the X, I'm going to erase the X on the next one. So I'm going to use the same position and delete the X just with a space. And since there's no time delay afterwards, it will erase this x immediately and then put the next x on the next location. So it should look um, seamless. Okay, the microcontroller is programmed. And it looks like I got the nested loop backwards. So that makes sense. It's going up and down the y and then the x. So I'm going to reverse these. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, looks like it's doing the right thing. It's going along the X on the first line. And right when it gets to the end, it should go straight to the next line. 
And it looks like it didn't go to the last position. And I probably have it because of the less than. Yeah, it should be less than or equal to here. So let's do that again. Let's test that one. Zero, one, two, three, four. Will it get to 15? Yes. Okay. So it looks like the formula is correct. So let's go ahead and make a function. So I think the function is going to be, what did I say last time? LCD set cursor location. And then I'm going to bring in an X. I can make this a U. 98 T X and Y. Okay. Well, it's going to be a void. We're not returning anything. And the first thing we need to do is send an instruction. And this will be zero x80, the hex equivalent of 1000000, zero, 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 plus the x, plus y times 40. And this is for this particular LCD. So you'll need to plug in the correct number here for what position the next line starts. You could make a defined macro that has this number in it. In this particular tutorial, I'm not going to do that. That's easy enough to do. So if you want to do that, you can. And I think that's all there is to it. We could put in like a string that you'd want to put in there, but we have so many types of things that we want to put on the display that we can just keep it like this. You have a set cursor location and then you put whatever number you want there. So let's go ahead and try that and see if it works. I didn't save it yet, so it's not coming up. So I'll just put X and Y here. Actually, these are ints. I wonder if I can put you int. I haven't, I haven't really, I don't think I've tried this yet. See if that works. So I'm going to do the same thing on this next line. So if this works, we are successful in making that function. No errors. Let's flash the microcontroller. Still works. So now you know how to set a particular cursor location on any part of the display. And now we can get started with videos that cover other features of the microcontroller, like doing ADC, um, analog to digital conversion, which is the subject that I want to cover next. And we can output the conversion that is happening onto the display so we can see what's going on with the sensor that we're using. So stay tuned for that video. Thank you for watching.